The Delta Works are one of the seven modern wonders. They are the largest system of flood defenses in the world. And they are currently being used as a template for many countries on how they should defend themselves against rising sea levels. But how could such a small country construct one of the most advanced flood defenses? To answer this, let's take a look at its history. The Dutch had been building dams and dikes and other flood defenses for millennia. In fact, the first settlers of the Netherlands built their settlements on hills because of the frequent floods. After all, they are called the Low Countries. And the first dams, dikes and dunes created by the Dutch were built in the 8th century. But as the Netherlands grew richer and more populous, the flood defenses were improved. In the 1930s, the Netherlands constructed the longest dam in the world, the Afsluitdijk, to protect the central region of the Netherlands against floods. You can watch my video on that after this one by clicking on the link at the end of the video. Now that that project was completed, the Dutch government started looking into plans to dam off the southwestern part of the country as well, right here in Zeeland, which is the Zeeland that makes New Zealand new. But they weren't able to make significant progress because the Netherlands was busy being invaded by Germany. And after the war, the Dutch government prioritized rebuilding the old rather than building the new. But then, everything changed when the North Sea attacked. In the night from the 31st of January to the 1st of February, exactly 67 years ago, in 1953, a storm hit the Netherlands with a ferocity rarely seen in this part of the world. Because it was the 50s in Europe, many radio stations, weather stations and emergency officers weren't staffed at night. So when the warning was sent out that evening of an incoming flood, there was nobody there to listen to it. Until they heard the water rushing through their streets, dragging away houses, cattle and people. While this area was protected by dikes, they simply weren't strong enough to withstand a storm of this magnitude. They were designed for the smaller regular floods often occurring in the Netherlands. But this storm broke the coastal defenses in 67 locations, with holes up to 3.5 kilometers wide. In total, 1,836 people died in the Netherlands, 70,000 people became homeless, and 200,000 farm animals were killed. The news broadcast the next morning proclaimed, the sea needed just a single night to prove how powerless humanity is. 20 days after the flood, the Dutch government created a team of experts tasked with looking into ways of tackling the problem of the Netherlands constantly flooding. They called this team of experts the Delta Committee. After all, the Dutch had already created a large dam just 20 years earlier. While the southwest of the Netherlands was being flooded, the people behind the Afsluitdijk slept safe and sound. So they already had the technology. Now they have the willpower. All that was needed was a plan. But some of you might be wondering why they called it the Delta Works. Well, the region through which most of the flood came is called the Delta region, because three different rivers end in this region. The Meuse, the Schelde, and the Rhine. So the Delta Works is named after the Delta Committee, and the Delta Committee is named after the Delta region. So we've come full Delta. The committee spent over two years gathering data and setting up the Delta plan. Over those two years, they presented five points on how the Netherlands should improve its flood defenses. In total, the costs were estimated to be about 2 billion guilders, which is about 2.5 billion euro in today's money. Now that doesn't sound like a lot today, after all, humanity possesses far better technology, far more resources, and far more abundant manpower. But 2 billion guilders in 1955 was a tremendous amount of resources to devote on a single project. In fact, this was about 13% of the entire Dutch economy at the time. To put the scale into perspective, if the Netherlands would try to spend a similar amount of their GDP on a project today, it would be about 120 billion euro. That's enough for the Netherlands to fund three missions to Mars all on their own 
including the research, development and infrastructure. At least with Mars, the Dutch won't need to worry about flooding. Now the analyses were completed. The plan had been laid out and the costs had been calculated. It was time for Parliament to vote on the Delta Works. With a landslide victory for the Delta Law in Parliament, it passed through the Senate in 1958 and a day later was signed into law with the signature of Queen Juliana. The work could now begin. But where to begin? You can't do everything all at once. The Netherlands simply lacked the resources to do so at the time. And so the decision on where to start came when the committee published their second suggestion. They concluded that the lowest point of the Netherlands, near Rotterdam, was also the most likely to flood and the most deadly, with 3 million people living behind the dike in cities like Rotterdam, Delft and The Hague. In fact, during the flood, a hole did get into this dike. Whenever people tried to throw bags of sand in the dike to plug it, the water would immediately drag it away again. Realizing the imminent danger they were facing, the local mayor convinced a local merchant captain to use his 18 meter long ship to plug the 15 meter wide hole. Because of the bad weather, the ship might get blown away again. So he rammed the ship into the dike, giving rescue workers just enough time to fill the hole with sandbags. And you know it's Dutch, because there's a bicycle on the ship. Without their efforts, millions of people might have become homeless, rather than just 70,000 people. And if you want, you can visit the monument they put there in honor of this captain and his rescue workers. And so, when the Delta Committee published their findings on just how vulnerable this area was, the local governments immediately funded the flood barrier which the committee had suggested, without waiting for the national government to approve funding. They built it right here, at the Algera Bridge. The flood barriers would be hoisted above the river to allow ships to pass underneath, but can be lowered into the river in case of a flood. Next came the largest part of the project. You see, Zeeland was basically a collection of islands, resulting in around 700 kilometers of shoreline which needed to be protected with 700 kilometers of dikes. And so the key priority for the Delta Committee was to find a way to shorten these 700 kilometers to just 80 kilometers. They decided to do so by connecting the various islands to each other with dams. This meant fewer weak spots, reduced maintenance cost, and increased quality of flood defenses. The plan called for the construction of four dams where the water from the river could still flow into the North Sea, but the North Sea wouldn't be able to flow into the rivers. As well as several smaller dams further upstream which were needed to divert the flow of the river in such a way so that the water would flow into the sea instead of flooding the area behind the major dams. But as you may have noticed, the most southern inlet would not be dammed off. This was because this waterway led to the port of Antwerp. So the Dutch decided that damming one of the largest ports in Europe probably wasn't going to make them very popular, so they kept it as is. Damn Belgians always messing up infrastructure. But this wasn't the only accommodation made for the port of Antwerp. You see, ships travelled regularly between Amsterdam, Rotterdam and Antwerp. But this plan would make those waterways nearly inaccessible. So to maintain the level of trade, the Dutch decided to dig some extra canals to let the ships continue their business unhindered. And so the Dutch started building various dams simultaneously, starting with the smallest ones. The Delta Committee acknowledged that no plan like this had ever been attempted. They therefore advised to start with the smaller dams first in case of unforeseen consequences arising halfway through the building process. And while each dam was a little different, the dams did fall within three types of dams. The first type was the tried and tested method of using a gondola. This was the same method they used when building the Afsluitdijk I mentioned earlier. 
They would span a cable across the water, attach a large claw, and use that to drop rocks into the water until they reached all the way to the surface. Then they would pump sand onto the rocks until it was filled up completely. But this technique didn't work in places with a strong current, as the boulders wouldn't stay in place. So they developed a technique where they would place hollow concrete blocks into the water, keep them in place with a temporary wooden construction, and then fill the concrete blocks up with sand. Then they kept placing them next to each other until they had a dam. To keep them all in place, they poured sand and small stones on top of the concrete blocks until they had a proper dam. This was called the Phoenix Quezon Method. Okay, that sounds badass. Engineers are much better at naming things than historians are. After completing a few of those dams, they had effectively turned one of the deltas into a freshwater lake. This had the effect that the flora and fauna, which had evolved to living in an environment with both fresh and salt water, was dying out. And the goal was to completely dam off this area. And the construction was nearing completion of this goal. But by the 70s, people started caring a lot more about the environment. And so local fisher folk and environmentalists started protesting against this loss of flora and fauna. This reached all the way to Parliament when the radically progressive Christian party, made up of mostly young people, threatened to leave the ruling coalition if the government wouldn't find a solution to these environmental problems. So the government decided to throw a bunch of money at some engineers and scientists to figure out a solution that protects both the people and the nature. So a bunch of radically progressive Christians? Baby boomers helped save the environment. What? What? I, I. Okay, boomers, good job. I wish 20s boomers were a lot more like 70s boomers. This new plan took into account that most of the dam had already been constructed. So they decided to keep the dam in place and focus on the unfinished parts. Here they decided to put a storm barrier, which could be lowered during a bad storm and kept open the rest of the time. This way, the fresh and salt water mixture wouldn't disappear and the local wildlife would be preserved. But how do you make the longest surge barrier in history? Well, the plan was to construct additional pylons. These pylons were big, took one and a half years to make and had to be made on site. So they used one of the three artificial islands which they were already constructing for the original dam and converted part of it into a dry dock where they could build these pylons. When the pylons were ready, a large trench was created on the riverbed. Mats were then placed on either side of the trench to prevent the soil from flowing into the trench. Then, the sand underneath the trench was vibrated to pack the sand together. Now that the riverbed was sturdy enough for the pylons, they were picked up one by one and delicately placed onto the riverbed. Each of the pylons was hollow, so to keep them in place, they were filled up with sand, while on the riverbed they were covered by stones and sand. Now that the pylons were locked in place, the engineers attached the barrier between the pylons that will actually stop the waves. With these dams and flood barriers finished, it would be nearly impossible for a flood to hit this region of the Netherlands ever again. But there was still one section left. While the Delta region was secure, the city of Rotterdam wasn't secure. While the first Delta work was created in the city, it needed two more just to be safe. They built a flood barrier atop a river, which was very similar to the first delta work they built there. But the second flood defense was a large system of dams along the river leading into Rotterdam and the port of Rotterdam. This system required about 50 kilometers of dams and demolishing part of the city with historical buildings over 400 years old. This was deemed too costly. And so the Dutch government had to choose between keeping the people safe and keeping buildings safe. So this time, 
They let companies compete for the best design that was relatively cheap, wouldn't block the passage to the port of Rotterdam, but would keep the people safe. And the choice fell on a unique design. This storm barrier is one of the largest moving objects ever created by humanity. It had to be built piecemeal and assembled on site. Due to the size of the individual pieces, the company had to hire several specialist contractors to get the massive parts they needed. There would be two barriers, one on each side of the river. They were designed to rotate, so that when there was a flood risk, they would slide the two barriers onto the river where they would meet in the middle. Once in position, the barriers would be filled with water so they would slightly sink into the river and can then withstand the oncoming storm. And so, finally, in 1997, the last of the Delta works were finished. And humanity had shown that it wasn't so powerless after all. The construction of all the projects combined lasted from 1954 to 1997. And not a single one of them has ever failed since being put into work. While a storm like the one in 53 hasn't hit the Netherlands since, there have been several moments where the Delta works were being closed down to protect against oncoming storms. The Delta works were basically designed to last forever in the minds of those who made it. And it should literally last centuries with little maintenance based on the weather patterns of the 20th century. But recent reports showed that as sea levels rise and the climate changes, the Delta works might not be able to stand against the tides of the future. In a worst case scenario, the sea level will rise up to 4 meters, requiring a complete overhaul of the Delta works and the Dutch flood defenses as a whole. But not to worry, I'll make a video about that in a few decades if that does happen. But for now, the Delta works has kept the Netherlands safe and will continue to do so for decades to come. If you like this video then please leave a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you have any questions I will try to answer all serious questions in the comments below. If you want to learn about the Afsluitdijk or how the Dutch dug up their country then click on the videos on screen now. This was Avery from HistoryScope, thank you for watching.